Finals week, boys. All Blacks versus South Africa. How good is that? Mate, it's subconsciously, it's the final the Northern Hemisphere really wanted. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Uh, <laughs> it is pretty special. It's actually funny when we got to the pool stages or going through, everyone in South Africa was talking, who do you want to play in the quarterfinal? France or New Zealand? And um, I said to everyone, well, there's only one team that beat us more than we beat them, and that's New Zealand. <laughs> so I always take France, but yeah. now in a final, what a game it's going to be. I think people's going to love it. You boys have played the All Blacks plenty of times. What are your sort of memories of, of playing against us? I, uh, I always talk about we got two debuts, you, the first time you play for South Africa and then obviously the first time you, you face the Haka. And uh, I think it's really just built around the respect for over 100 years of... And it's not just the rugby field, it's the history behind the two teams. And I also think it's the camaraderie. We absolutely go hammer and tong, like for 80 minutes. And it's the first team that we want to be in our change room for a beer or go to see them in their change room. And uh, I just don't think that there's... There's that kind of rivalry between two teams that is so intense for 80 minutes and yet so connected afterwards. You know, I think that's where it's sort of the, speci the specialness lies. Yeah, I think for me, there's good memories and there's bad memories. So, I mean, 2009 for us were fantastic, three wins over the boys. And then people ask me my hardest game ever. 2010, arriving in Auckland, Eden Park, playing... <laughs> The ABs after we've beaten them three times, and they were a bit angry that day. <laughs> I mean, walking off the field, nose standing like oh, this, yeah, yeah. broken nose, blooded, and just got smashed. Um, and I mean, but that's what the Springbok ABs is about. Uh, you go at each other. So this week, boys, um, what, what, is it, what does it look like from, from the South African camp? What, what do they need to get right to, to beat this All Black team? The biggest thing for us will be around how we can, I guess, recover. Um, both emotionally and, 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 and physically. It's, we've been two weeks, you break out of jail twice. Uh, one point wins, super intense games, very physical. Uh, we've been fortunate to be on the field and, and, and yeah, you, those boys walking past us after 80 minutes, yeah, they've, they've really put it in. And so it'll be around their recovery and how, and how to get themselves to that physical threat or mm. challenge that they that they, that they present their game. Yeah, yeah. to their game and so I think that's the biggest challenge for, for South Africa this weekend is to be able to get into that space where they can be that physical threat and play their game and again it's finals rugby they'll find a way mentally it's we just gotta hope that those bodies recover in six or seven days and that you've, you've been I, yes? I think it will be easier than last week I think last week just that emotional game against France against those nation being right there I mean celebrating people giving Rossi a champagne for a quarter-final. I mean, it took a lot out of us. And then you go into a week against England where everyone is expecting you to win. And it's like, a, yeah, you... And it's hard to get yourself up there. And especially the way we play. I mean, you guys play with skill. We need to be there physically. We need to dominate every collision. And to be there, you have to be at 100%. If you're 98, you struggle. But I mean, <laughs> World Cup final against the All Blacks, facing the Haka, going out there. <laughs> Those boys will be there. Doesn't They're going to be at their best. You, you'll see us there. I think all the tiredness, all the emotion will be behind them. They'll be at their best and it's going to be a big game. Welcome, JK, back into the truck. Been a while, son. Finals week. How could we wow. not be uh, pumped up versus South Africa? Is this the one we wanted? I don't really care, to be fair. Yeah? Yeah, I think um, if you're going to win, you've got to beat the best. You know, the old foe. Bring it on. It hasn't been since 1995 that we've played them, so for two powerhouses to not meet each other in a, in a World Cup final that long, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, look, and I think look, we do know them pretty well. It'll be interesting which game they bring, but I do know that when you play South Africa, they bring just incredible physicality. We've got a massive amount of respect for, for, for each other, but we've also got this great rivalry that's, that, that's grown over a long time. You, you, you've been involved in some of those great games. <laughs> yeah. Can you f reflect on yeah. the great ones? We were the first team back you know, after apartheid in 1992. And so for me to get over there eventually and play them, um, and then the style of rugby, because you hear about these massive men that are just going to come charging at you, and you go, oh, yeah, right, oh, yeah. but then you see them. 
Um, and I'll never forget, I still get um, goosebumps. We ran out on Alice Park and there was silence, and I can still remember it. Um, and, and then there was just this physicality during the game that we just had to deal with and we weren't used to. So it lived up to all the, all the expectations. 1987 World Cup, the, the, yeah. the final week. Do you remember what that week was like? Remember yeah. those feelings you had? Yeah, I do, and I, I, and I remember them really clearly. It built in this, uh, this incredible atmosphere. And I always remember um, Sir BJ, may he rest in peace, uh, saying to us, you know, we've always been world champions but now there's this tournament. You have the whole history of your game riding on your shoulders. <laughs> so, um, and we felt that, you know, do you want to let down um, Sir Brian Lahore, Sir Colin Meads, you know, Brian Williams, all those people that had made our jersey what it was? Because if you lose the first one, you can ruin a hundred years of tradition. Yeah, so the pressure, pressure, yeah, that was incredible pressure for us, but it was a pressure that it was a pressure that we embraced, right? You know, I think at the end of it, it was just relief. Just relief that we hadn't let our ancestors down. I know the feeling. Yeah. Um, JK, thank you so much for joining us. Let's have a great week, mate. Yeah, and, mate, um, bring it on. Come on, bring, bring it, it on. on. You feeling homesick, Russ? Nah, actually feeling all good. How come? Because the messages that are coming from you guys, keep those messages flowing in, supporting our boys. Grand final this week. Up, Up the ABs! ABs. Wahoo! Hey New Zealand, obviously hugely exciting week ahead. Uh, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's supporting us. Man, we can feel the support over here. We appreciate it so much. All the videos, all the messages, uh, we can really feel it. And you guys are behind us from the little kids to everyone in between. Keep them coming, it gives us so much energy and it definitely gives us that extra boost when uh, times are tough. Boys really pumped the opportunity this week to play in the final. We need your support again. One more to go, so uh, get behind us. Shout out to all our believers. Hopefully we get the job done for you guys. Love ya. Come on, New Zealand. Do you guys remember that, the feeling of, of the World Cup final the week leading up? Do you remember how you felt? Did anything yeah. change for you? The thing that sticks out for me was the Thursday night. And I, was, I, was, I was pretty nervous in 2007. And my missus was with me in the room and I was tossing and turning and I couldn't sleep. And uh, eventually she got irritated and she was like, what's, what's your problem? I was like, well, we've got a pretty big game on the weekend. You know? <laughs> so I was sort of, sort of playing in my mind. And uh, in a, a haze of, of, of tiredness, she said, well, if you only worry and think about coming second, you'll forget to come first. And uh, it, was nice. quite a, it was quite a pertinent thing that she said to me, it was because both teams get themselves into a final by doing the things that they're good at, the basic things that make all black rugby and springback rugby. And you don't want to steer too far away from that with all the noise that's going on and all the cameras and the press conferences and tickets and, and wives coming in. So you just got to stick to those basics of, of what got you to that final. Yeah. Do you remember? I, I'm probably more uh, relaxed than Smitty. So we tried and <laughs> Jake White didn't want us to go play golf. So we had to organize through our security to be able to get away, to get to the golf course on the Thursday before the yeah. game. And then, I mean, the day before, no, but didn't he, he, as you, he caught us. As we caught. walked into the lift with our little bags, we didn't have a old golf kit on. It's just on the backs, walking to lift, there's Jake White. So, <laughs> <laughs> Farida Priya was in front, Skulk Berger, myself, and I think it was Donny Rousseau. We were at the back, so we just <laughs> went to the side that Farida had to walk with his bag into the lift with Jake. But then we were out, and um, even on the Saturday, my wife said she can't, couldn't believe it. I was like sleeping till four hours in my bed, dossing. Uh, but I mean, once you go to that stadium and that adrenaline starts building up, it's unbelievable to play in a World Cup final. Oh, it's pretty special. So it's going to be a great week for these mm. boys. What will what will Rosie Erasmus be talking about within that group? You guys would know, him, well, you know, him very well. The only thing that you can say with absolute certainty about Rosie Erasmus is that you can be certain of nothing that he's going to do next. It's just, <laughs> it's, he's, he's just, he's just always wants to be it as a player. I mean, I, you tell the story about. When he was playing under Nick Mallett, there was no analysis systems and all these new mm. softwares. He went and bought 
yeah, yeah, yeah. his own system and started doing his own analysis while playing for the Springboks and then started giving the feedback to Nick Millett, the coach. <laughs> As a player, he was, so, a player, so he was yeah. he's always just, he tries to be one step ahead and he's, he's been pretty good at getting it right most of the time. Um, but he, he's, he always finds a way, especially with this group, to get them in the right space mentally. He just knows which buttons to press and... I mean, you've seen it. I think it's, you know, we've seen a Springbok team that always only ever did one thing. We just bashed and kicked and, but this team has done a few yeah. things. They've innovated. Every week we see some new some new move, something out of the box. I mean, that, that line out, mm. but they're playing straight down to Kirtley. You know, there's always, there's always something going on. So Rosie, expect the unexpected. Yes. Um, and um, it'll be a fantastic game. Hey boys, thanks so much for joining us in the truck. Um, look, it's gonna be, one hell of a week and you know mm. made the best team win at the end of it. Oh, it's a hard one to take. Okay. No, it's going to be difficult. Cheers, Thank you for having thanks, us. Thanks, John. Thanks. Cheers, boys.